Hello and welcome to Fanshawe College's virtual open house. I am Casey. I am a recruitment officer at Fanshawe. I'm going to be your host for today's session. Before we start getting going with the presentation today for fashion design, I do have a few quick housekeeping items that we'll go over. So just to start, audience webcams and mics are turned off for the session. If you do have any questions though throughout the session, you can submit them through the questions feature. There should be a question mark on the right-hand side of your screen. You can click that and submit your question. Following the session, there will be time to answer those questions and we will do our best to get through as many as we can in the time that we do have today. If you have any questions that come up from the session after you leave today, feel free to email myfuture at fanshawc.ca or you can book an appointment with one of our recruiters to get some more information based on admissions and more to do with the applicant cycle. I'll post those links for you in the chat a little bit further in this session. And just one last thing, if you have a couple of programs open right now and running, it could affect your webinar experience. So we do recommend that you just turn those off right now if you can. Okay, so getting on with the session, I'd like to introduce to you Leanne Waller. She's gonna be talking to you about all the ins and outs of the fashion design program today at Fancha, and then I'll be back at the end for the, the question and answer session. Great, thanks. Welcome everybody. I'm uh, really happy that everybody was able to take time to join us today, so thank you for that. Uh, so I've got a presentation that we'll go through. So uh, first off, I wanted to say, you know, shopping around for a college and a program and figuring out what the right fit, I know is not an easy decision. I'm a mom myself, have three kids who've gone through or are just finishing up their education, uh, one in Fanshawe right now, actually. And so I do understand that. And so I'm hoping that today I'm able to answer some of your questions, um, give you some visuals as to, you know, what we do here at Fanshawe college in the fashion program and uh, help you make that decision a little bit easier. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to have uh, this video uh, start up. This is the Unbound Revival uh, fashion film and I'll talk about what it is uh, and the importance of why I'm showing you this. So we'll, sh we'll see probably about two minutes of it or so. We are the creators and inventors of past challenges and future success stories. We are rooted and threaded by the earth above and below. Like thread that gets pulled from the clothes we wear, tossed away without repair. Plastic bottles and charred pieces of glass, watered up newspapers, tossed on the grass. Melting plastics and tearing out trees, we ask, will this be the environment that surrounds me? Fashion is the second most polluting industry impacting our planet, and I don't want to add to the list of problems we as an industry have already created.
Okay, so I hope I'm back. I hope that that couple of minutes has enticed you to watch the rest of it. It's about 14 minutes long. So a link will go into the chat function so you can take a look at that. And what that is, is last year, of course, everybody knows what happened in March last year. Our third year students were in the midst of putting their collections together and we were in the midst of planning a zero waste fashion event, as you can kind of tell from the fashion film, the beginning of it, uh, sustainability was, you know, a, an important part of not only the collections, but also the event. And of course that came to a grinding halt with COVID. So. Um, I, the reason I think this is kind of one of the most powerful things to show you today is that our faculty pivoted um, during this very difficult time and we made a fashion film. We partnered with um, the communications media programs and came up with this beautiful film. So as you continue on, you will see the students working from home and working on their collections and, 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 and going on. And what I really wanted to kind of share with you as well is that we took this and we entered um, this into a competition and my PowerPoint's not working, sorry. Um, why is my PowerPoint not working? Oh, there we go. And uh, we won um, for best student fashion film. So we were nominated for best eco message, for best fashion film. And this is an international competition that internationally everybody, you know, several hundreds and hundreds of submissions and this, this film won. And so, you know, I just wanted to show you what are the powerfulness of our faculty and collaborating with other programs and other students uh, from other programs that we were able to, to pull this off. And so although it seemed at the time a very disappointing moment, it's turned out to be kind of an amazing opportunity because this has now gone globally, this, this uh, fashion film. So I just thought that was really an important thing for you um, to, to kind of understand. Typically what happens is we have a fashion event uh, called Un Branded Unbound and it's your runway show, a spectacular event, fun event to uh, be at. And we hope to do something similar to that in the future but uh, for now we're probably going to go with something a little bit more along that lines of a fashion film going forward but with that we do create a, a fashion magazine so this was last year uh, 2019's fashion magazine and there will be a link um, that you can kind of view the whole magazine so you'll see the designs of the students from 2019 uh, featured in this in this um, in this magazine Another amazing initiative, and I'll try not to well up on this one, but um, our faculty is really passionate about research um, and getting involved in, in research with fashion. And so a couple of our faculty were working on a collaboration with Goodwill, um, sort of a, a little bit different project about upcycling um, sort of uh, uh, garments that you know were otherwise going to go into landfill. And of course, again, COVID hit, and so that research project was put on hold. And what they did is these faculty pivoted and turned and they turned uh, into creating uh, an environment where sewers could come in. So it was immigrant uh, or sorry, newcomers to Canada, as well as some of our own students who were on co-op that worked in this socially distanced, very well controlled um, uh, scenario at Goodwill to create masks, which is we all know are in demand or they could work from home. And so lots of them, uh, if they didn't feel safe coming in, were working from home. And again, there's a link to, um, to a, a, a whole little video about, about this um, research project. There's some of the fashion faculty at the 2019 Unbound, so all dressed up. There we are, I'm kind of in the middle with Loren who led the fashion film and leads the third year students along with all of our other faculty, which are also just as amazing. So I do want to share with you, not specifically the uh, curriculum, but just sort of generally um, the four main pillars that hold up the curriculum. So the first one being <clears throat> design. Whoops, I went just one click too fast. Uh, so design skills. So being able to uh, develop research and execute, ex execute innovation innovative designs for a specific target customer. So lots of experimentation um, with, uh, with coming up with uh, honing your design skills. Along with that is, uh, I don't know why my, 
I'm sorry, um, this is going too fast, uh, visual communication. So once you have sort of a, an idea, we need to visually communicate that. So we do that through a you know, number of different ways, through fashion illustrations, through technical black and white drawings, through uh, different mood boards and things like that. And we um, teach you from uh, manual, uh, all of these uh, skills manually, and then we take it to the Adobe Creative Cloud where you're learning Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, and being able to now visually communicate your ideas. From there, uh, so quick, sorry. From there, uh, you've got you know, the design idea, you visually communicated it, and now what you need to do is we need to be able to bring that two-dimensional idea that's on paper now to fruition to a three-dimensional form. So being able to make patterns, being able to grade so that you've got different sizes, um, then being able to sew it up using industrial sewing machines, and then being able to use uh, sort of an AutoCAD type program uh, to develop patterns using a computer. We use Gerber technology as the, the program that we use. So production skills are, are really important and lots of courses dedicated to to that. And last but not least is business skills. So, you know, it's nice to be creative. It's nice to be able to have the skills to be able to both um, visually communicate it as well as take it from a two-dimensional form to three-dimensional. But with all of that, the end of the line, you need to be able to sell it. You need to be able to make money. And so understanding things like costing, uh, creating business plans, you know, sourcing, um, all of that is, is, is so important to be successful and to be a well-rounded designer. So we have, you know, courses dedicated to that as well. And as you could already tell through the video that I showed, shared with you, um, uh, applying life cycle thinking, design and production with sustainable techniques is critically important and is threaded throughout. So just, uh, you know, a few, um, you know, kind of brief points uh, within design, production, distribution, use and end of, uh, of life, what you're going to do with that garment is all part of our curriculum threaded throughout, not just a standalone course. Just to give you some facilities, just some quick pictures to give you an idea. So that's me a few years ago. I'm a little blonder, a little older, but uh, there I am working with Alex uh, on the industrial sewing machine. This is our studio. So students are working uh, on making some patterns there. Here's a faculty working with a student uh, to do some uh, draping on a dress form. And here's a student that's gone more into our shop where we're able to do some uh, things with textiles, some uh, doing some silk screening right here. There are some awards that you can apply for as a student. So not that you need to know them specifically, but here's a list of some of them. So an opportunity to uh, for bursaries and awards that you can um, you know, apply to and, and get money for. We've had success with lots of competition uh, winners. So uh, more recently with Innovation Day, Kelly Scott, uh, one of our mature students, uh, won for her uh, collection uh, that she created, a children's wear adaptable um, collection. Um, so that was amazing. Um, in 2019, Marone won, uh, was a semi-finalist for uh, the CAFA. And uh, so that was an amazing. And then in 2018, um, our uh, Ty Wilson won the Gerber Ideation uh, International Competition. She won first prize. So uh, for her uh, garment there, which was beautifully executed and done. I've already talked a little bit about research projects. We've been involved in a lot. Um, so this was the one that um, the two faculty were working on, um, supporting uh, newcomers through textile diversion that they were working on and then had to sort of stop because they could no longer do that. And then they, they took that into creating the masks, uh, partnering with Goodwill. This is another one that myself and another faculty were, uh, worked on, uh, which was um, creating a, an outfit. We were kind of working with Davwire and they were working with Western University. And so what we were doing is, is creating a, a, an elastic and kinetic energy suit. So basically through movement, you were able to, you were be able to create energy. Um, so uh, that was, you know, we weren't part of the technology, but we were part of creating the vehicle to put the technology in. So amazing opportunity for our faculty and for our students. So others that, you know, um, I'm not going to mention all of them, but I just want you to realize that it is something that we're pretty powerful, uh, you know, involved in. 
Uh, some of you may be thinking about articulations where, where you can further your education and earn um, a degree and we've got quite a few um, uh, in uh, Limerick, um, in Ireland, in Manchester, in England, in Southampton, Huddersfield, um, it, mostly in, in uh, the UK where it, most of our articulations are. So if you're interested that's something that you could look into. Some students also are interested in our postgraduate option, which is the costume production. Um, that's at our downtown CDPA campus. Karen Harley is the coordinator of that program. So if you're interested in taking uh, that after our program, that's certainly uh, something that you know a few students every year are interested in getting into um, theater and film uh, kind of uh, garments. This is a co-op program, so in the May to August period, uh, the four-month period, you will do complete two um, co-op, and uh, those are uh, play, paid uh, work placements, so that you're gaining uh, experience along with your uh, education that you're that you're learning at at the college. So lots of different opportunities. You have a co-op consultant that you work with that assists you in that. So the program is getting close to 50 years old and has uh, graduated many successful uh, designers, business owners, educators, costume designers, and, you know, kind of uh, lots of different um, places. So here's just a, one little wall. Uh, we have several of these, but um, you can see some of the names, creative director, uh, uh, movie studio services associate, freelance stylist, uh, design director, co-owner, uh, and co-founder of Line Knitwear, um, pr production sourcing, design and product development for Myant, founder of So Easy Academy, designer and product developer Walmart. So that's just you know a few, and you can see some of the years of when those students graduated. We certainly have students that get into something very specific, um, like latex uh, design. So uh, one of our grads uh, has their own company in partnership um, called Etiquette. Um, so that's interesting. You'll get a link for uh, for this graduate, uh, Meg. She has a very unique uh, job, and uh, so there's a link that uh, sort of highlights what uh, what she's doing. So I'll, I'll encourage you to take a look at that, and you can kind of see what um, how she's got a really interesting opportunity for herself. So the careers um, that you could go into, they kind of fall in those same pillars that I talked about our education, but basically some students still do, or graduates do find themselves in retail. Some will go into design, whether they're working for themselves or, so, or someone else, uh, visual communication, technical design is, is a big area, um, and production. Uh, production is coming back in, uh, you know, we're having more domestic, smaller, but more domestic, so we're not doing as, uh, you know, the, some of the offshore and that mass producing of uh, low quality garments that's starting to change. And so thankfully, we'll be bringing some production back. I looked up a current job. This is November 6th. This is uh, with jobbank.gc.ca. Good place to go to search up, um, you know, jobs. And so this wouldn't certainly be an entry-level job, uh, but this is uh, Artex uh, equipment. So basically, um, like uh, like coats, like a, you know, winter, um, you know, uh, durable coats, that kind of thing is what, uh, among other things. But that's what they have, and they're out in uh, BC. Um, so that's that. Um, your admission requirements, you need any grade 12 um, English college or, uh, or university and any grade 11 or 12 math college university are mixed. Those would be the pre's uh, recs admission to get into the program. What do I get uh, out of this program? Highly qualified and passionate uh, faculty, as I mentioned, you know, we really did pivot on in COVID and we're continuing to do that as we teach a lot of our courses online or hybrid, meaning we go into the college, socially distancing, and then we do the rest of it um, like this through a Zoom or, or um, a way that we're um, interacting with students. Uh, the professional portfolio fashion show that may be a fashion film until we can um, until we can do that again. 
um, your practical uh, co-op uh, of your practical work experience, learning the skills that are current and relevant in the industry. We have uh, industry advisors that we meet with often to make sure that we are um, continuing to uh, be relevant and be teaching skills that are what they're looking for uh, to hire. The research project opportunities to get involved and to get a, even a paid position within that. Uh, we do like to travel. I've taken a lot of the travel uh, slides out just because I'm not sure when we'll be um, permitted to do that again, but we certainly do um, love to do the travel tours because that's how you can learn about different things uh, from different countries and just be inspired. So, you know, Paris and Milan and um, Brazil, you know, we've, we've done several different uh, study tours. The opportunity to pursue a degree, so take what you've earned here after the three-year advanced diploma and um, take that and learn, earn a degree. And then off also, if it uh, fits with what you're looking for, the postgraduate certificate in costume production is also um, really nice. So this is my contact information. Um, any specific uh, questions about the program, I'm happy to answer. If you've got any other uh, general questions about the college or the process or timelines, then you'd probably be best um, with the, uh, um, the more generic um, email. I think I forget what that was called. I know it's going to be in your, in your chat. Um, for those kind of questions but specific about the curriculum anytime uh, email me and I'd be happy to answer you and then you can check us out on Instagram and Facebook we have one specifically for Unbound and then we have one uh, for the fashion design program and that's that's it for me so if we've got some right. questions Thank you so much, Leanne. Uh, I always love hearing about our creative programs and yours is one of the most creative. Uh, so we do have some time for some Q&A. Um, if you do have questions that you wanna submit, again, you can send them through the questions feature, click on the question mark. And I will start with some that have already come in. I've already put all of the links through the no. chat as well. And then also um, any of those follow-up emails uh, are already listed there. So. The first question we have is in regards to co-op. So is the co-op mandatory and what if I don't find one? So the co-op is part of uh, the program um, and there are some fees that are associated with that. So we do highly recommend that you do uh, take advantage of co-op. You have three opportunities uh, after first year, after second year and after third year and you only need two. Um, however, you can graduate without it. You just won't have the co-op endorsement on your three-year advanced diploma. Um, and you are going to be working with a co-op consultant who runs a few classes to help you get prepared and helps you with your search to figure out what's a good fit for you uh, in order to do a co-op and, and be successful. Um, the intent for co-op is for it to be a paid. However, paid um, doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be an hourly wage. There can be some other remuneration that is sort of, you know, there's, there's some discussion about what that can be. Um, you know sometimes paying for your travel time to get in to you know uh, to work um, gift cards you know there's some other ways that you can get paid but it is not an internship and in where that it's not that you're not paid at all okay great uh, another question that we have is is this a good program if I'm interested in shoe design and streetwear design um, shoe design, not, I mean, we don't have any of the equipment to actually take and create the shoe. So that's a very specific uh, field. We do certainly explore um, design, uh, streetwear design for sure, yes. Um, we do uh, certainly explore, you know, um, shoe design and bag design and that kind of thing as far as you, you know, looking at that two dimensionally. Um, and then you could maybe do some kind of mock-ups, but to actually take a shoe through to uh, through the design process, we just don't have that equipment the, um, in our facility. So we're geared more to, you know, uh, garments. So more the apparel side that yes. in clothing. Okay. Yeah. Um, another question here: How many hours of class per week, and how many hours of homework go along with that? Okay, uh, so about 20 hours, I would say, a week, give or take. Some semesters might be 19, some semesters might be 21, but approximately 20. And I would say you're probably going to be dedicating about the same amount of time in, in homework. Uh, you know, every a lot of what we do is hands-on. 
Um, and so, you know, depending on where you're at with the learning, um, you know, it may take more time to practice. And, you know, they say it takes 2,000 hours to become an expert at something. So you can only imagine if you come to us with absolutely no idea of how, how to sew, we are only too happy. We start with the basics. We start with how you thread a machine, how you safely use a machine, and we start sewing on paper and we start slowly and until you get, you know, to be able to sew an evening gown. But it is a steep learning curve and there is going to be time that's going to be needed to be able to improve that skill. So I, you know, I, I don't want to scare people away, but I just want to say that the hands-on, you know, kind of um, applications can take longer to to learn so we have pattern making which is hands-on we have drawing which is hands-on you know there's a lot of hands-on um, courses so they can take um, you know additional time to to be able to learn so yes I would say equal to the amount of in class you're going to have that equal um, time outside of class and not I don't want to say every week some weeks it's lighter and some weeks when projects are due it, it, it feels a little heavier and certainly the workload by the time you get into third year becomes heavier as well as you're working towards your collections. Mm -hmm. Okay, that actually leads into another question we had in when you're talking about building a student from the ground up. If if a student doesn't have in high school the opportunity to do any sewing or drawing courses, will that hinder their success? No, not at all. Not at all. In fact, sometimes it's we we then don't have to break the bad habit. We we start with a fresh. Uh, clean slate. So I, I would say, I mean, certainly if you've got some experience, then you're sort of building on that and you're learning new ways, new techniques. It's certainly not a requirement for you to come in with, with those skills. And we do really do start um, even with drawing. We start, you know, with circles to, you know, develop your, your fashion croquis and, um, you know, and then, you know, move into more difficult things. So certainly if you've got, if you've got some skill already, say in drawing, you've already done lots of fashion drawing before, all that means is that first semester is going to be a little bit easier for you. And as faculty kind of figure out that that this is, a you know, be, you know, that you can do something beyond, then you can maybe even uh, navigate and negotiate something a little bit more specific, um, you know, to take you to the next level. But we do assume that everybody comes in with almost little to no knowledge and we start from that basis and then build from there. Okay, great. So I have a two-part question uh, that was submitted, so um, kind of goes hand in hand. What type of technology is recommended for first year? And also, how much time in the program is spent designing in programs like Illustrator or Photoshop compared to the hands-on portion? Okay. So um, computer programs for first year, is that what you said was the first one? Yeah. So for, uh, there isn't going to be anything that you are specifically uh, going to need to purchase. I mean, we do use Adobe Creative Cloud and you will be learning that not in first semester, but in second semester you will. Um, so you will be using that program. However, you are linked to use um, a, like a, a student kind of program um, that you it's it's sort of like an app that you are able to access and use pretty well all the programs that we have. Um, so there isn't anything that you're going to need to specifically uh, purchase as far as software. Um, in first year, that would be it. It would be Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, you won't get into using Gerber until you're in second year. And, and same thing, you'll be able to access through this app that's going to allow you to, um, to use the software. Um, and not have to download it or have a copy yourself. And then, uh, sorry, the second part of the question is uh, how much uh, design time versus, um, like, by hand versus yeah. uh, computer? Yeah, so how much time are you spending in the programs like Illustrator and Photoshop compared to the hands-on portion? Um, so that's, it's sort of hard to, so, uh, in so in first year first semester fashion drawing is 100% um, by by hand and then you have technical drawing that's 100% by hand and then once you move into second semester you're starting with uh, adobe creative cloud photoshop and illustrator and pretty much it's now kind of you're you're starting to hone those skills but as you're doing design development you're working in sketchbooks and sketchbooks can be whatever you want them to be so if you love to to draw by hand your sketchbooks can be filled with those if you you know take off and you already maybe have some adobe creative cloud 
cloud uh, skills or you you learn it here and you love it and that's the way you want to do create your sketchbooks you can do all your experimentation using that so there's a bit of a, a back and forth uh, that you can you've got options certainly by third year you're not doing presentations by hand presentation boards storyboards are going to be done using um, you know illust using Adobe Creative Cloud so there are some things that we just you know, we allow you the opportunity to do go one way or another. We certainly teach both. Um, and then by third year, you're probably working a lot more digitally than you are by hand. Okay, thank you so much, Lance. So unfortunately, we have reached the end of our session. Thank you to those that did submit mm -hmm. questions. I have put in the chat, again, some additional uh, email addresses that you can reach out to if you have any further questions after today. Um, you can also book a one-on-one -on -one appointment if you have more questions regarding admissions and those sorts of things through the Fanshawe Connect link there. Um, and please check your emails coming because we will have some information regarding some of our open house activity this Saturday. So again, I want to thank you, Leanne, so much for spending the time with us today and speaking about the Fashion Design Program. And I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their open house experience. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Casey. And thanks, everybody. Thanks for taking the time today. See you.